Welcome back guys to the Interstellar Exploration Devlog series. The last video was just an introduction to the project, so as promised, this video is all about the in-game environments. So the in-game environments can be broken down into three main parts, the land, the water and the sky. These can be broken down even further into more specific features, and all these features will be implemented in-game at some point. So I figured we'd start with water, as the water is quite atrocious for a while. In particular, creating an ocean system that we can reuse on each planet. So there's a few ways we could go about creating this ocean system. The first is to loop through every single vertice and then deform it on the y-axis based on whatever formula we're using to calculate waves. Then chuck that to the mesh collider and update physics through there. The only problem with this is that our smallest planet is 8km by 8km, which is roughly 640,000 vertices to deform each frame. This brings us to our second option, which is using a compute shader to calculate all the vertices in parallel and then push that to the mesh collider. The third option is to get rid of the mesh collider completely and then write a vertex displacement shader to give the effect of waves and then write something else to handle physics. This sounds the hardest, so let's just go with option 2 for now. So I've spent a bit of time in Unity's shader editor getting the water to look nice and watery before moving on to the compute shader. My original plan was to just layer sine waves on top of each other at different directions and speeds and amplitudes and stuff like that, but then after a quick google search I discovered there was something called trichoidal waves which actually look like waves. So I found this shader by Jasper Flick and I just yoinked that and whacked into the compute shader. And yeah, these waves look great, except um, it runs at 40 FPS. So it turns out that looping over every single vertice wasn't going to be the bottleneck, it was going to be the removal of each water mesh each frame and reapplying a new one with different vertices. It turns out that's the actual problem. Anyway, uh, option 3 still stands, so I'm going to spend a bit of time turning this compute shader into a vertex shader. So that actually didn't take too long at all. Um, here's the shader graph so far. It's I've got five subgraphs to calculate Gerstner waves, and these five Gerstner waves are layered on top of each other to create nice little ocean waves. Um, yeah, now I've just got to do physics and our boy Jasper has given us the code already, just need to modify this to determine whether or not objects are above and below the water and we should be good. Right, so it's approaching the end of May and I haven't actually worked on this. Uh, I basically got stuck with water physics, so at the moment the water physics and the actual ocean waves themselves don't line up. So instead of spending more time trying to debug this, I think I'm just going to retrace my steps and redo everything. So we'll find out what the problem is uh, then, I guess. I found the problem and it ended up being that I swapped these two mass functions around. Now that I've swapped them back, everything works fine. All the cubes are floating quite nicely in the ocean. It's quite mesmerizing, actually. While I was at it, I created an editor tool to help me populate a world with ocean tiles. All I need to do is put in my ocean material, put in my world size, and then there we go, we got an ocean. Well that's the ocean system done, so we can cross that off the list. I'm going to hop into Unity's shader editor and start work on a skybox shader. This shouldn't take too long and it'll be nice to get something done before I throw myself into terrain generation. I found these three posts on how to make a stylized skybox shader inside of Unity's shader graph. I took the best bits of them and smacked them together, and I think it looks pretty good. All it really does is grab the direction of your directional light source and then smack a big circle over it. Other than that, all it's really doing is taking two gradients and lerping between them based on the direction of the sun. Oh yeah, and it's got pretty stars. Anyway, now that the skies are looking nice and pretty, I'm going to move on to terrain generation. To do this, I'm going to resurrect one of my dead projects called Terragen. Terragen is a procedural terrain generator for Unity's default terrain system. The plan is to use Terragen to generate height map data, but instead of saving it in Unity's default terrain data object, I'll be saving it in the alpha layer of a texture. After a bit of messing around with Terragen, I got its height data being stored in the alpha layer. I also have it sampling a gradient with the same height data and storing that color to the same pixel. 
This is helpful because it means we can store a large amount of terrain data in a very small file size. For example, an issue B is a 16km by 16km terrain. This can all be stored in a 1616 by 1616 texture, which takes up roughly 3 megabytes. The next step is writing the terrain system, which is going to read this data and generate a mesh accordingly. So I have the terrain chunks generating each mesh correctly, however I am really not happy with the way this terrain looks. Because I'm sampling a gradient based on height, all it's really doing is forming bands of colour, and it's not exactly looking great. Another problem I'm having is that the load times for each planet using this system has exponentially increased. Turns out procedurally generating meshes at runtime isn't exactly the quickest way to do things. Even though this approach keeps my file size quite low, I think I'm going to have to scrap this and try something else. So my new plan is to use Terragen as intended to generate Unity terrains and then convert those Unity terrains into low poly meshes. This way I can use Unity's terrain editor to deform and shape meshes to my liking before converting them into a static mesh. I should also be able to sample the textures from the Unity terrain to get rid of that ugly colour banding that we had earlier. To see if this workflow would work for me I decided to try and actually create a planet. I messed around with Terragen for a bit, set up the ocean tiles, and then applied a new skybox using my new skybox shader, and then converted the terrain to a low poly mesh. I think this terrain looks much better than the previous attempt. However, it's looking quite sparse without any trees and rocks, so I quickly wrote up an editor tool to procedurally place objects around the terrain. It takes quite a while to run, but I think the result is worth it. Well that brings us to the end of the devlog. I didn't really tick a whole lot off of this list that I had at the beginning. I did want to get clouds done, but all my attempts have led nowhere, so I figured I'd leave it for another video. Unfortunately, my uni term has resumed, which means I won't have as much time to work on the game. However, one thing I can promise is that there'll be just as shitty drawings next video. Anyway, thank you all for watching. See you in the next one.